the ultimate hack. The EcoFlow Stream Microinverter is now connected to batteries, and then the batteries are connected to the solar. So I've just figured out how to get your balcony solar running basically 24-7 by simply adding some battery storage between the inverter and the solar panels. And quick insert here, those of you outside of Utah, do not despair because currently EcoFlow is only shipping and selling these if you have a Utah address. Those of you who live outside of Utah, I think I have found a solution for the rest of you. It's forthcoming in a video, so be sure and subscribe so you don't miss it. Definitely continue to watch this video because the principles on how it works is going to be very similar, but uh, the other one I found for the rest of you should be legal anywhere. So subscribe so you don't miss that. A zillion of you leave the video early. That makes me sad, but I guess it is what it is. So before you leave, please do four free things for me like comment share subscribe that's going to allow me to continue to produce this very unique and innovative type of content for you and hopefully saves you a whole bunch of money as well those of you that watch till the end thank you thank you you're welcome to wait until the end to do those four things now to be clear ecoflow does not recommend you do this you are also messing with high voltage dc power especially from the solar panels because now we're connecting them up in series so caution needs to be used with this you can really screw stuff up and cause yourself damage or injury or even death potentially. I am not a licensed electrician or anything. I'm just a guy on YouTube that makes this for your entertainment benefit. So the solar is coming and feeding an MPPT solar charge controller. That is dumping power into this uh, golf cart battery. This is from Temgo and it's a 51.2 volt nominal 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The awesome thing about this is it's dirt cheap and it's got this sweet uh, monitoring screen right here uh, that uh, is touch screen and has a couple of different uh, pages that uh, you can look at. And it's also got a really nice uh, Bluetooth smart app for your phone so you can see all the stats and everything on the battery. But then it gets better. So then the power comes off the battery. I've got uh, the positive uh, fused right there and uh, it's coming to these distribution bus bars. And technically you do not need this many of them, okay? All four of these was a hangover from a previous project and I didn't want to tear it all the way down. But uh, you could do this easily with just one positive bus bar and one negative bus bar. But uh, those are coming and uh, feeding the EcoFlow stream microinverter through the MC4 connectors. So as far as the stream is concerned, it's seeing this DC power from the battery as quote unquote solar power. Now, Take note that uh, these ports here, I think these are actually port two, is disconnected on purpose because two and three are in parallel with each other. I can serve up more current with just one connection here than this MPPT charge controller can handle. If you check it out, we are 1,040 watts of power getting produced by that microinverter right there. And uh, we can see here that uh, it's pretty darn close, 1,030-ish watts. Okay, so think about the possibilities here for a minute. The Utah law says we can connect up to 1,200 watts of solar. For some reason, I'm only getting 1,000. That might be because uh, I've disconnected that port. However, I was noticing that it was being funny when that port was connected. But in any case, let's just say it sticks to a thousand. This will still be substantially better. So we can't connect more solar power or feed more solar power in than 1200 watts, but there's no limit to how long you can feed that power into your house, right? If you're connecting directly to the solar panels, like we had a minute ago, you're going to be producing power only when the sun is shining, and you're going to be limited to how much solar this inverter can handle. So something not much more than that array. Well, now consider the possibility with some batteries. And I use the term plural because I think you'd want multiple batteries. Let me explain. Let's assume that your house consumes more than a thousand watts every hour of every day. Now, if it's less than that, you could certainly dumb the inverter down a little bit to a lower output, which is sweet uh, and a nice feature of this. But let's just take the thousand watts because that's easy math. So that's 24 kilowatt hours every day. Well, if you are stuck just connected to a small solar array, there's no way that you're going to offset your 24 kilowatt hours because you're locked into only when the sun is shining on that. But there's no limit to how big you can make your array. The limit 
and the requirement is that we can't feed more than 1200 watts into the house. So we go ahead and just utilize this, but then we connect it up to say three or four of those batteries because each of those batteries holds about five kilowatt hours of power. So for easy math, let's say we get four of these batteries. That's 20 kilowatt hours. And then you quadruple the size of your array. So now you're getting four times as much solar when the sun is shining that your house is going to use. However, you're not going to use it all when it's being generated. So you build a huge array and capture a huge amount of sunlight during the sunlight hours. It goes in and charges up your batteries that uh, were depleted overnight, right? This is running 24 seven. So you're getting a thousand watts of solar dumped into your house day and night. And so your solar array will be big enough that it will not only cover the consumption of this when the sun is shining, but it would also charge up all of your batteries. And then during the nighttime, when the solar is not producing, the batteries will just be a huge reservoir that the microinverter draws from and continues to offset your power consumption. So just with that simple hack, you could probably easily 4X the amount of power that a microinverter like this could offset for you. I think you'd be shocked how quickly it would pay for itself. I really like this charge controller. I'm going to leave a link for the same manufacturer. Uh, it's a different brand than this one, but the good news is it's actually twice the size of mine. Mine's somewhat small, but I really love this charge controller because it has a Bluetooth app, so you're very easily able to monitor stuff, and it works for all common voltages of batteries, so 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt batteries. This is only a 20 amp one, so uh, my solar array is actually too big for this. The one I'm going to link down in the description is a 40 amp model, which would be perfect to pair with uh, one of these batteries. The other awesome thing is this battery has this display, so we're able to see stuff. Currently, I have solar coming in, but uh, currently, because of my smaller size charge controller, uh, the uh, microinverter is outpacing what my charge controller can put in. So we're pulling out a negative, you know, four-ish amps of power. If I were to disconnect the solar, uh, you would actually see that number increase by quite a bit. Uh, but uh, we're basically almost 100% offsetting what this uh, microinverter is consuming uh, with three panels right now. And so that's why I say you should uh, definitely get the 40 amp model because that'll uh, double your input so you could easily get like six solar panels connected up to it at once. Isn't this so sweet? So now we're talking major, major power offsets because we're running day and night. So then consider this. One more thought. Get uh, an Emporia power monitoring system. I did one at uh, my house. I'll leave a link uh, for it down in the description. But it goes in your breaker panel and it will monitor uh, power consumption in your house. Well, you can tee up one of their smart plugs that, that just plugs into 120 volt uh, power. You could put that on your solar inverter output and then program it so that that turns on only when a certain threshold of power consumption is met in your breaker panel. So that way your inverter only turns on when your house is consuming more than a thousand watts. And then when, if your house is consuming less than a thousand watts, you could program that smart switch to automatically turn off. And that way you're not, you know, wasting power, just sending free power back to the grid. If you have your battery array, uh, you'll still be uh, taking advantage of the sun while it shines and uh, getting some power, but uh, that could be a potential way to really maximize your potential savings with the system. The other nice thing is uh, going with these batteries, you can use them right now to offset uh, the cost of electricity and it would be very easy down the road to just add a simple off-grid inverter and you could still use the batteries and all your solar when the grid is down to power critical loads. Cost-wise, it's a no-brainer. At the time of making this video, these Temgo golf cart batteries are selling between $750 and $800. No tax, free shipping. EcoFlow makes the EcoFlow Stream Yultra that is basically this stream microinverter in a package with a battery. That battery is 1.92 kilowatt hours, I believe. For easy math, let's just round it up to two. This battery is slightly over five kilowatt hours. Let's just round it to five for easy math again. So that means it's two and a half times the battery capacity in this single golf cart battery that you get with the Stream Ultra. The Stream Ultra costs 
$1,200. So you're getting two and a half times the amount of battery capacity with one of these golf cart batteries that you are with a single EcoFlow Stream Ultra, and it's almost half the price to go with these golf cart batteries. A minute ago, I was talking about connecting up to like four of these batteries. Again, that was to allow this to run basically 24 seven uninterrupted and to be able to be recharged by a massive solar array. You don't have to take that plunge right off the bat. You could just get a single one of these and uh, consider connecting the battery to say just input one, right? And then go ahead and connect solar panels, additional solar panels, because they're cheap, the other inputs. Okay, so I just disconnected uh, this one, so that means that uh, this input on these two is dead. So now if you look at the app, we're only inputting 624 watts, and that's still with two inputs going. You know, we can see PV4 is maxing out at around 400 watts. So 400 times, let's say 12 for the nighttime, that's 4,800 watt hours. So that's just shy of the capacity of one of these golf cart batteries. So if you just connected one to one of the inputs on this microinverter, then double the solar. So put like a thousand watts of solar on a charge controller going into this battery or 2000 watts of solar, you know, max out a charge controller, 40 amp charge controller. is going to give you about 2000 watts going into that battery. Go ahead and just have that, you know, 400 watts worth of power running 24 seven Hook up additional solar to the other inputs here. And then as money allows, add another battery, double the solar again, etc. Just be sure that uh, if you have end up with like say three batteries, just make sure that you remember that these middle ports right here are in parallel with each other. These four middle ports need to be coming from the same power source, whether that be solar panels only or battery only. Do not mix up battery with a solar panel. That would be very, very bad because then the solar panel could back feed into the battery and overcharge it and could have all kinds of problems. The solar panels only can charge the battery through a charge controller. I hope that made sense though. So you can totally scale this. No need to go big or go home. Just get one battery, live with it for a little while, add another one, live with it for a little while, add another one, you know, and double your solar with every time. But that could easily give you a massive solar array, something close to a full like rooftop solar offset just by filling up your reservoir and the batteries and then slowly trickling it out over the course of, you know, a 24 hour period. Down in the description, I'm going to leave links to all the stuff uh, you see here, as well as the solar stuff out there. I'm also going to leave a link to my original video when I hooked up solar directly to the EcoFlow stream. So links to all of that is down in the description. If you live in Utah, this could be the ultimate hack to saving huge amounts of money on your power bill. But I always say the smartest people are in my comments section, so please leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as well, because I guarantee you this is something you haven't ever seen anywhere else, and it's totally epic. I've got more content in the pipeline along these lines, so you won't want to miss that. All right, we'll catch y'all next time.